With hospital studies showing that up to 60% of symptomatic cases test negative for antibodies, and my own research showing that up to 80% of long haulers do the same, where does that leave us with regards to immunity? Can you catch COVID twice? If so, how long before your immunity runs out? Let's unwrap this, and a bit of a warning, it's complicated. It goes without saying that the idea of catching COVID-19 twice is horrendous on just about every level. If post-infection immunity is short-lived, then the consequences are dire for individuals, healthcare systems, countries, governments, pretty much the whole world. And with studies showing that only 17% of people retain their antibody levels after three months, with that antibody level falling as much as a factor of 23 times, there certainly is room to worry. This graph shows the decline of antibodies against a log scale. It's actually incredibly depressing, said Michael Malin, a virologist at King's College London. It's a huge drop. And remember back in February, there were early fears that people in China had caught it twice, with positive test results sandwiching a negative one. But let's hold up a moment. The immune system is complicated, and the tests are bad. For once, that's actually a good thing. Firstly, you may have seen in the news recently that it's not all about antibodies. When discussing long COVID previously, I've drawn a distinction between the lymphoid and myeloid types of immune response, also known as humoral and cell-mediated responses. Now we're going to be making the distinction between the innate and the adaptive immune system. But each of those comprise of both humoral and cell-mediated components. It gets confusing if you try and get your head around all of this at once, so let's just wipe our minds and start again. No shame in this, uh, this subject bamboozles everybody uh, who isn't a professor of immunology. And one thing you can rely on in this pandemic is for Ed Yong to write fantastic pieces. This one hits the nail on the head. I will be dipping into it a bunch. The immune system works roughly like this. The first of three phases involves detecting a threat summoning help, and launching the counterattack. It begins as soon as a virus drifts into your airways and infiltrates the cells that line them. Cytokines, white blood cells, and interferons. This initial set of events is part of what's called the innate immune system. Its job is to shut down an infection as soon as possible. Failing that, it buys time for the second phase of the immune response, bringing in the specialists. This is where it gets really good. Amid all the fighting in your airways, messenger cells grab small fragments of virus and carry these to the lymph nodes, where highly specialised white blood cells, T cells, are waiting. The T cells are selective and pre-programmed defenders. Each is built a little differently and comes ready-made to attack just a few of the zillion pathogens that could possibly exist. For any new virus, you probably have a T cell somewhere that could theoretically fight it. Your body just has to find and mobilise that cell. Picture the lymph nodes as bars full of grizzled T-cell mercenaries, each of which is just one type of target they're prepared to fight. The messenger cell bursts in with a grainy photo, showing it to each mercenary in turn, asking, Is this your guy? <laughs> when a match is found, the relevant merc arms up and clones itself into an entire battalion, which marches off to the airways. Pretty cool, huh? Some T cells are killers, which blow up the infected respiratory cells in which viruses are hiding. Others are helpers, which boost the rest of the immune system. Among their beneficiaries, these helper T cells activate the B cells that produce antibodies. Now, this is the important bit. After the virus is cleared, most of the mobilized T cell and B cell forces stand down and die off but a small fraction remain on retainer, veterans of the COVID-19 war of 2020, bunkered within your organs and patrolling your bloodstream. This is the third and final phase of the immune response, memory cells. So essentially, it might not be such an issue if your antibody levels are low, as long as you have the immune memory to produce more when required. And more good news for those with negative antibody test results, some tests, including those made by Abbott and Roche and offered by Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp, are designed to detect a subtype of antibodies that doesn't confer immunity, and may wane even faster than the kind that can destroy the virus. Some scientists were stunned to hear of this choice. 
God, I did not realise that. That's crazy, said Angela Rasmussen, a virologist at Columbia University in New York. It's kind of puzzling to design a test that's not looking for what's thought to be the major antigen. So not only is the calibration of the test out of whack, having been calibrated to pick up antibodies in just this severely ill section of people, but the test may also not be looking for the actual antibodies that are doing the bulk of the COVID smashing. A lot of the recent press on the subject has been covering the importance of T-cells in the light of these waning antibody titers. But immunity isn't just about them. Florian Kramer, professor of microbiology at the Icahn School of Medicine, talks about B-cells and declining antibodies in this wonderful Twitter thread. Simple B-cell biology. B-cells make antibodies, and there are essentially three types. Firstly, initial subsets called plasmablasts. They die after about two weeks. Migrating B-cells who trundle off to the bone marrow and continue to make antibodies for a long time. And thirdly, memory B cells who don't make antibodies but become plasmablasts if you get reinfected. What does this mean? Basically, that not having antibodies right now doesn't mean that you can't make more in the future if you need to. Some results from his study. Dr. Jarnberg, sorry about the pronunciation if you're listening, selected 121 individuals that were bled around 30 days after symptom onset and brought them back approximately 82 days after symptom onset. We did see a decline in antibodies. It was statistically significant, but tiny. And interestingly, those who had lower levels of antibody actually saw their levels then go up over time. All very interesting, but it does leave us some questions. What is the long-term baseline titer going to be? How long-lived will that be? How much antibody will you need to be protected from reinfection? And how much antibody do you need to be protected from disease? Well, these are the big ones, aren't they? And it's made even more complicated by recent studies showing that some people may have some immune memory against SARS-2 from previous infections of the common cold. When researchers tested blood samples taken years before the pandemic started, they found T cells which were specifically tailored to detect proteins on the surface of COVID-19. This suggests that some people already had a pre-existing degree of resistance against the virus before it ever infected a human. Maybe as many as 40 to 60% of people. Feeling a bit better? Well, keep your hair on. Unfortunately, this isn't quite as straightforward as it sounds either. Donna Farber, microbiologist at Columbia, cautions that having these cross-reactive T cells tells you absolutely nothing about protection. It's intuitive to think they'd be protective, but immunology is where intuition goes to die. The T cells might do nothing. There's an outside chance they could predispose people to even more severe disease. We can't know for sure without recruiting lots of volunteers, checking their T-cell levels and following them over a long period of time to see who gets infected and how badly. You can go pretty crazy pretty quickly with the speculations, says Shane Crotty, who co-led one of the studies that identified these cross-reactive cells. A lot of people have latched onto this and said it could explain everything. Yes, it could, or it could explain nothing. It's a really frustrating situation to be in. I wish it wasn't, he adds, but the immune system is really complicated. What have we learnt so far? Well, that declining antibody levels aren't necessarily too worrisome, that both B cells and T cells have memory, and we still don't really know why different people have such differing types of response to a SARS-2 infection. But we can look at some of the closest relatives to SARS-2 that we know that have been around for long enough to draw some conclusions from. Immunity to the most frequent coronavirus we encounter, the common cold, can last for up to a year or so, whilst more severe coronaviruses like MERS and SARS-1 we've seen immunity persist for up to two years. So how do we think it's going to look for SARS-CoV-2? It's reasonable to guess that the duration of immunity against SARS-CoV-2 lies within those extremes, and that it would vary a lot, much like everything else about this virus. Everyone wants to know, says Nina Labert from the Duke NUS in Singapore. We don't have the answer. One more thing to consider. The more widespread the virus, the more ends of the bell curve type events we're likely to see. So now that we've got almost 21 million confirmed cases, if immunity was only going to be lasting around nine months or so, then we should be starting to see a few of those first cases uh, creeping into the start of the bell curve now, given that the size of this whole thing is so huge. And so far, we have not seen a single confirmed case of reinfection. 
as opposed to uh, inactive RNA triggering a positive test result or potentially a persistent virus triggering a positive test result. For what it's worth, uh, persistent virus and whether it does hang around in your body a bit longer is, uh, is a subject for another film. So one to two years does look reasonable, and that should give us enough time to develop some vaccines that actually have gone through stage three trials, of which there are a number at the moment which are looking quite promising. So if you've already ridden the Corona coaster and somebody in a dodgy back street somewhere offers you a little couple of vials of Sputnik, probably steer clear for the moment. Till next time.